got new gods and goddesses, kings and queens, got new as God and you, the knives, the greed, and family, allies, and enemies. What's happening? Some double rights. Look, man, I'm going I'm to go at the aboriginals, the Nygdians, because they the ones like really like stabbing us in the back real cold right now. And everybody in these movements have purpose. Like, for example, the Hebrew Israelites. The Hebrew Israelites, we could set them up in a position to get the Christian churches up out of our communities and pretty much up out of Africa. The Moors. The Moors, when it comes to law, we got, they pretty much is our Congress. And we can start to set up laws or set up our own constitutions with the Moors if we all just start to connect like Voltron. But this is on Pan-Africanism because the Aboriginal Nigdians is basically saying that this guy right here, let me go to the first slide, Melville Herskovitz. They saying that Melville Herskovitz is the, the reason why we have the Pan-African flag and he is the father of Pan-Africanism. This is what they saying, Melville Herskovitz. This guy right here is the guy is a German-born teacher. It was his teacher of anthropology. Now, this is the thing about that. And that his name is uh, Franz Boaz. You, you, Uzi, Uvrizi, some Boaz, something. It don't matter. Anyway, uh, but it was in 1923 when he got his first degree in philosophy, and then after that, he got a degree in uh, a MA and a PhD in anthropology. All right, now check this. Uh, in 1957, Herskovitz founded the African Studies of Association. Now, he was accredited for bringing African and African in American studies into the school system of the United States. That's what he was accredited for, for not the Pan-African movement. But certain Negroes don't know that. Let's go on. Now, it's things like this that are really get to you when you see things like this. Everybody recognize your greatness except before you do. You know, the courses I've enjoyed teaching over my long career here at Weber State University has been the history of Africa. I picked it up because uh, no one else in the department seemed to want to teach it. So I spent a couple of years really investigating uh, deeply the history of this very, very amazing continent. And it's a difficult course. And basically, he says it's a difficult course because it's so vast. Teach because it covers so much ground. Because it covers so much ground. All right, so... Pretty much it is. It's a difficult course. But then you got Europeans going into Africa, going to African study. And while black folks are saying, I'm not African, we ain't from Africa, we from right here in America. We originated here. Melanin is a product of Africa. Melanin. Now, you niggas is not from Africa. Y'all right. But melanin is from Africa. The most melanin on the face of the planet and the people is in Africa. Tourism players in the East Africa region are said to conduct a price competitiveness survey in the Bay This is the Africa that all the, the they got a couple of Hebrew Israelites and these Nigdians. This is what they want you to see, this Africa. Ensure uniformity. Not that Africa. The prices across the region. The Not that Africa. The survey is mandated to inform how the five Not that Africa. So the thing is that they want you to think that you want to, I heard one Nigdian go say, Man, I don't believe you African until you got a hyena on the chain. All right. They out there chasing hyenas. Do y'all know who that is? That's Absalom Jones. I want you to know Absalom Jones. Now, Absalom Jones' names will be synonymous with this brother right here. Do you know who that brother is? Richard Allen. And I chose that because his name it was, it was on a postage stamp, and they got some other pictures. But I chose that one particular picture because it was on the postage stamp. So let's go into Absalom real quick. Absalom Jones was born into slavery in 1746. During the 17, 72 years of his life, he grew to become one of the foremost leaders of the persons of the African descent during the post-revolutionary period. In his younger years in Delaware, Absalom sought to learn how to read. When he was 16 years old, his owner, Benjamin Wycope, it says, brought him to Philadelphia where he served as a clerk and a handyman in a retail store. He was able to work, himself, work for himself in the evenings and keep the earnings. He also briefly attended school, ran by the Quakers, where he learned mathematics and handwriting. In 1770, he married Mary Thomas and purchased her freedom. It, wasn't, it was until 1784 that he obtained his own freedom through manumission. He also owned several properties. Now, 
that right there just to let you know that he basically bought his own freedom and then he bought his wife freedom and it was like well I, I nicked in and once told me well my grandfather had land and slaves ain't supposed to have land right so let's go into this brother right here Richard Allen um uh, Richard Allen and the other brother was the uh, founders of the uh, African uh, Methodist uh, Methodist Episcopal Church. Founders, uh, man, did I get some information on Richard Allen? I got no, I got some paper right here. I want to read this. All right, so it says um, in 17, 1787, a young Methodist black young black Methodist minister Richard Allen, along with his black clergyman Absalom Jones. Founded established the Free African Society, a benevolent organization that held religious service and mutual aid for free Africans and their descendants in Philadelphia. It says in 1794, Jones accepted a position as pastor of the Free African Society, African Municipal Church of St. Thomas. Allen desired to lead the uh, Methodist con uh, Congression established in the South Philadelphia growing black community, Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church, which also served as a way station on the Underground Railroad African in the name of the early black religious institutions reflected the expansive view of the African consciousness evident also in Allen's support for the immigration back to Africa and Haiti. So, but they want to give Pan-African to Melville Hurts. They want to give him our flag. Here we go. This brother right here. Y'all know who that brother is? Y'all don't? Okay. That brother is Mark Delaney. Martin Delaney. Now that brother was, uh, he got at Lincoln like, hey Lincoln, look, promote me. I'm, I'm, I'm your man. He also was gathering brothers to go fight the war. You dig? So he was an abolitionist. And 1846, the famous abolitionist Frederick, Frederick Douglass. He was actually next on the list. Hold on. Frederick Douglass. But let's go back real quick before I get to that. Mark Delaney is, is, Delaney is credited with the Pan-African slogan of Africa for Africans. Africa for Africans. That's who he got the slogan from. Okay. It says his purpose. So hold on, hold on. Uh, Douglas. So because I'm going to also read about Douglas. Donald Trump narrative, the life of Frederick Douglas. I am very proud now that we have a museum on the National Mall where people can learn about Reverend King. So many other things. Frederick Douglass is an example of somebody who's done amazing, uh, amazing job and is getting recognized more and more. I notice now you have this racist that's mentioning our leaders, but because they pushed the line for Africa and African, they don't want to have nothing to do with them. Right here. His purpose, he wanted to persuade a fellow African, I'm going to leave out America, uh, Mark Delaney to become a co-editor uh, of the newspaper of the North Star. So Frederick Douglass came down because he wanted Delaney to be a uh, part of his newspaper. And Delaney had his own newspaper called The Mystery. Said he was a brilliant writer. It says Delaney, for much of his life, championed immigration for blacks as a way of achieving equality for from it says first to central and south america so first he was like man look let's leave and go to central and south america later he was like let's go back let's go to africa all right he traveled to africa um southwest ohio that's ohio is where his grave site is all right where douglas was born a slave and in escaped to freedom as a young man. Delaney was born a free black man in 1812 in Charlestown, WVA, which then Virginia. It says, but freedom had severe limits. His mother, Patty, taught him and his siblings to read and write, then was cited for violating state laws against literacy instructions for black children. So basically, just like that sister that son her children to go get a better education. They find her and say she was still in education. 
They didn't want you to educate your own babies. You couldn't even teach your own babies. She was teaching her children, and it was against the law. It says, when they arrived, they ended up leaving. When they arrived at school, the African Methodist Episcopal Church, Reverend Wilson, uh, w Woodson, Reverend Wilson would go to help establish Wilderberg Force University, was a strong advocate for black economics, independence, and active in the Underground Railroad. So, therefore, is another Pan-African right there that you didn't see. It says Delaney soon involved in Underground Railroad himself and later established the abolitionist newspaper, The Mystery. And then it says in Pittsburgh, four years, Pittsburgh as the only paper to survive the devastating fire in 1845 that destroyed a third of the city. Now they say this fire destroyed a third of the city because this woman by the name of Ann Brooks was supposed to have been warming up some bath water and some embers caught fire and it spread around the city and burned everything left up. It says, um, the vice of break, Delaney. So they start talking about Douglas and the break of Delaney and Douglas and going that back. Okay, right here. In the same year, Congress passed the Fugitive Act. It says, which allowed slave owners to pursue and capture enslave, enslave any part of the country. In, 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 hold on. And capture slaves in any part of the country. Set fines on any law enforcement who refused to arrest such. So pretty much... They pretty much could go and just enslave anybody, and that's going to come up back further in my video. So let me keep going. Oh, damn. Okay, the next man, Alexander Crummel. Now, he was born in 1819. He's an American scholar, Episcopalian minister, founded the American Negro Academy. Now, they say Negro is what they called us because they don't want to call us African, but he uh, said to Crummel was born to an African prince and a free mother so he had a free mother was born to an african prince and his brother did some other things he became a citizen of the new republic and a strong prominent i said proponent of uh, liberia nationalism so he was pushing for go back to africa himself that's another brother of go back to africa you know what i mean and it was you could go look him up and it says that of his father originated in Africa. They talking about they didn't know exactly where he originated from. So Booker T. Washington, y'all know about Booker T. Washington. I want to go read one of some of Booker T. Washington quotes. Booker T. Washington said, um, "It is if you want to lift yourself up, lift up someone else." And that's why I got this statue right here. If you want to lift up yourself, lift up someone else. Africans in top spots. You always want to make sure African is in top spots. Ants, baby. So let's go ahead. Let's go to another one. W.E.B. Du Bois. We got to go in W.E.B. Du Bois. Now, if you go look up the father of Pan-Africanism, W.E.B. Du Bois is going to show up, homie. You, there's no way you're not going to be able to get it. So you basically throw away everybody I just named for Melville Herskovich. This is what the aboriginals are doing. So W.E.B. Du Bois is a founder of the oldest African and largest civil rights organization, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP. Du Bois founded a refuge in Ghana. Du Bois died in Ghana. So, I mean, why did he go back to Africa? So you could go through and say Du Bois never said he was African, but he went to Africa and died in Africa. You feel me? Let's keep it moving. Let's go to one of some of Du Bois' quotes. Children learn more from who you are than what you teach. There is no force equal uh, to the woman determined to rise. W.E.B. Du Bois, homie. You feel me? Uh, nothing in the world is easier in the United States than to accuse a black man of a crime. W.E.B. Du Bois, homie. An African. So let's keep it moving. 13. Who is this guy right here? Y'all don't know him? Y'all don't know him? Let me introduce you to that brother right there. That brother is Henry Sylvester Williams, the father of Pan-Africanism. Now, this is why they call him the father of Pan-Africanism. He was a Trinidadian. He was a Trinidadian. He known as the father of Pan-Africanism because he went to London and had the first Pan-African conference. And um, he was the first person of African descent to speak in the House of Commons. And it was so much more. But I only got 15 minutes for me to be able to post this on Instagram. But it's so much more. And y'all try to give our history to a European because they discover everything. And we can't discover nothing for ourselves. The aboriginal mindset is a destructive mindset of no, we not connected to nobody else. We only us. And it's an isolationist mindset. And the isolationist mindset well, pretty much it sets you up for genocide and destruction like the, 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 like the ADOS movement. I'm not feeling those two movements 
African or nothing. Your feathers is too soft. Stop twerking and start researching, Nignians.